السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ دس از ڈیٹا سیکیورٹی اینڈ انکرپشن لیکچر نمبر تھری لیٹس ہیو اے لک ایٹ دا لیکچر کانٹینٹ ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی اباؤٹ سم سیکیورٹی ڈیزائن پرنسپلس سم اٹیک سروسز اینڈ اٹیک ٹریز وی ول ڈسکس اے نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی ماڈل اینڈ وی ول فنش دا لیکچر with some standards defined by some international organizations. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain some fundamental security design principles and you should be able to discuss and use of uh, attack services and attack trees and you should list and briefly describe some organizations that are involved in cryptography standards. Ideally, we would uh, like to want a system uh, that will be helpful to resolve all the security related pro problems. However, it is quite impractical uh, to find such a system. It has not been possible to develop security design and implementation techniques that systematically exclude all security flaws and prevent all unauthorized actions. However, it is useful to have a set of widely agreed design principles that can help you to guide the development and protection mechanism. So here are some fundamental security design principles that can help you to build a better secure system. These are the listed here and we are going to discuss one by one each. So first, security design principle is economy of mechanism. It means that the design of security measures embodied in both hardware and software should be as simple and small as possible. That means it must be economical in, in terms of its uh, implementation. So relatively simple, small design is easier to test and verify thoroughly. So the easier, uh, the simple the design is, it is very easy for you to uh, test and verify it. With a complex design, there are more, more many uh, opportunities for an uh, attacker to discover subtle weaknesses and exploit that may be difficult to spot ahead in the time. Simple mechanisms usually have fewer flaws and requires less maintenance. In practice, however, it is very difficult Uh, principle to achieve. There is a constant demand for new features in both hardware and software complicating the security design task. The best we can do is to keep this principle in mind during the system design and we can try to eliminate uh, unnecessary uh, complexities. The next principle is fail safe defaults. It means that the access decisions should be based on permissions rather than exclusions. That means you uh, provide the permission based on the user access. Uh, the, the default situation is the lack of access. That means you do not uh, allow access to any of the user or a process in uh, any communication. And the protection scheme identifies condition under which access is permitted. Most file access systems uh, and virtually all protected systems on client server uh, use this kind of uh, design principle called fail safe default. This approach uh, is better, uh, this approach actually provides a better failure mode than the other approach where uh, the default is uh, to permit access. Uh, if you uh, allow access by default, Uh, there are more chances that the uh, user or a process can attack your system. A design implementation mistake in this mechanism that gives the explicit permissions tends to fail by refusing the permission. A safe situation, for example in this scenario, a fail safe default that can be quickly detected. A design implementation mistake in this mechanism that explicitly exclude access tends to fail by allowing access. So if you allow the access, by default, this design principle fails. 
a failure that may long go unnoticed in the normal use case. The next mechanism is complete mediation. It means that every access must be checked against the access control mechanism that means that every time the user is accessing a file uh, or a resource the system should uh, uh, perform access control rather than relying on the access system and retrieve from the cache to fully implement this system every time a user reads a file or record in a file or a data item in a database the system must exercise access control and that means for each request your system must perform the uh, access control mechanism for each user. However, this is an intensive resource intensive approach and it is rarely used. Uh, however, uh, in the normal system, uh, typically once a user has opened a file, no check is made to see the permission change. Uh, but if you want to implement the complete mediation, you have to implement the uh, uh, access control mechanism at each request for the resource for the insert for the update for the delete the next principle is open design principle that means the design of the security mechanism should be open rather than the secret it does not mean that your encryption keys uh, should be op open the all encryption keys must be secret however the encryption algorithm should be open to public scrutiny that it will help you to uh, uh, analyze your algorithm by a number of people and there can be some security analysts that can analyze that algorithm and help you to uh, suggest some uh, useful changes in the algorithm this is the philosophy actually behind the NIST program for standardizing encryption and hash algorithm that it means that most of the algorithms uh, can, that can be that are used in the uh, encryption algorithms are uh, in the public domain and uh, most of the people can access from the internet or any other uh, global resource the algorithm that can be reviewed by many experts uh, user can therefore have some high confidence in them another mechanism is uh, uh, design principle is separation of privilege it is defined as a practice in which multiple privilege attributes are required to achieve access to a restricted resource multi uh, it can be achieved using a multi factor user authentication uh, for example which requires the use of multiple techniques such as a password and a smart card to authorize the system um, instead of smart card you can use uh, your mobile number uh, for a uh, to uh, multi factor authentication this is often used to mitigate the potential damage of a computer security attack uh, it can be done by removing high privilege operations uh, to another process and running the process with a high privilege required to perform that task uh, however the normal operations can be executed in the lower privilege process an example can be seen in the banking transaction uh, for example uh, if you want to uh, if you want to perform normal operations uh, you can simply log into a system but when you want to uh, transfer your fund from one account to another you are uh, directed to a multi factor authentication that you they send you a one time password and you uh, access your mobile phone and uh, use that uh, one time password to uh, process some uh, highly critical task another uh, design security principle is least privilege that means every process and every user of the system should operate using the least set of privileges necessary to perform the task these two are very similar uh, this means that uh, the, the uh, user must only have the privileges uh, to perform a task uh, similarly uh, this also means that uh, every user and system should operate with the least set of privilege necessary to perform the task. If, for example, if the user of this principle is a role based access control, the system security policy can identify and define various roles of user and processes, and each role is assigned only those permissions needed to perform 
function for example if you want to perform a, a, a normal function you are not required to uh, access the, uh, the processes which have some high criticality uh, so unless the permission is granted explicitly user or the process should not be able to access the protected resource so any control system should allow each user only the privilege that are authorized for that user so if the user is not authorized to perform a function uh, your uh, access mechanism should deny the uh, access control to that resource another security design fundamental principle is least common mechanism it means that the design should minimize the functions shared by different users it means they must have mutual uh, providing mutual security this principle helps reduce the number of unattended communication paths and reduce the amount of hardware and software on which all users depend thus making it easier to verify if there are any undesirable security implications uh, similar to that is a uh, psychological acceptability it means that the uh, security mechanism should not interfere unduly with the work of user that you, your user should not feel it a burden that uh, there is a secure system and you have to follow many requirements to perform a task while at the same time your uh, system should meet the needs of those who uh, uh, authorize the access where possible security mechanism should be transparent to the user of the system or at most introduce the minimal obstructions so if a security me mechanism is very difficult to understand it will hinder the usability or accessibility of the resources and user may want to turn it off uh, to perform their actions uh, more swiftly in addition uh, to not being intrusive or burdensome security procedure must reflect the user's mental model of the protection that means it must have an image of the security system uh, that how will it will help for, how it will help them to uh, make secure transactions in their uh, uh, defined resources so if the protection procedures uh, do not make sense uh, or it is very difficult to uh, uh, translate it uh, in the user's mind uh, it will more likely to create uh, errors rather than uh, providing protection another important fundamental security design principle is isolation and it works in three contexts public access uh, and the processes and the security mechanism so first of all public access system should be isolated from critical resources to prevent disclosures of tampering that means your uh, public access system must be different than your uh, the, the critical access system uh, your data on the uh, the more critical the data is the more secure your server should be so in cases where uh, sensitivity or criticality of the information is high organization may want to limit the number of system on which the data is stored and isolate them for example if you have a the secure data you can move it to uh, another private server and uh, you can use the normal or you can say uh, less critical data on the public servers so uh, the division or isolation can be either physical or logical physical isolation means uh, that uh, it ensures that no physical connection exists between organization public access of information resources and organization critical uh, access of uh, information resources when implementing uh, logical isolation uh, solution uh, layers of security services and mechanisms should be established between public system and the secure system responsible for protecting the critical resource the second isolation uh, is the isolation of processes and files of individual users should be isolated from one another except where it is acceptably ex explicitly uh, desired that means uh, your process and files of each user must be isolated 
uh, all modeling operating system provide such fa facilities so they that so uh, the files and processes of each user are isolated unless they are desired explicitly so individual users have separate isolated process space memory space and file space with protections for prevention of unauthorized access and the third mechanism is security mechanism should be uh, isolated in the sense of preventing access from those uh, mechanisms uh, it can be implemented using uh, logical or physical uh, division or isolation for example logical access control may provide a means for isolating cryptographic software from the other part of the whole system that means you uh, isolate your uh, uh, encryption algorithm uh, or uh, the technique or the software from the other part of uh, your application and for protecting the cryptographic uh, that cryptographic software from tampering and the keys of replacement or disclosure so it will help you to secure your uh, actual algorithm that implements the uh, encryption Encapsulation can be viewed as a specific form of isolation based on the object oriented functionality. It is much similar to the encapsulation of object oriented programming. Protection is provided by encapsulating a collection of procedures and data objects in a domain of its own, much similar to the object of a class, so that the internal structure of the data object is accessible only to the procedure of the protected subsystem and the procedures may be called only at the designated domain entry point similar to the previous uh, encapsulation uh, design principle uh, another design principle is modularity modularity is similar to the uh, division of uh, functionality so it refers to the both uh, to the development of security function as separate protected modules uh, and to uh, use of a modular architecture for mechanism design and implementation for example uh, numerous protocols and applications make use of cryptographic function so instead you implement such functions in each protocol or application a more secure design is provided by developing a common cryptographic module that can be invoked by numerous protocols and applications so the design and the implementation effort can focus on the secure design and implementation of single cryptographic module and it including includes the mechanism to protect the module from the tampering so to use a modular architecture each security mechanism should be able to support migration to new technology that is the benefit of uh, uh, designing system in modularity that if you want to upgrade your system or you want to include the new features into that system you so you should be able to uh, uh, apply new features without requiring the entire system redesign the security design should be modular so that the individual parts of security design can be upgraded without the requirement of to modify the entire system similar to that uh, modularity another design principle is to design your security system into layers it refers to the use of multiple overlapping protection approaches addressing the people technology and operational aspects of information systems the failure of circumvention of any individual protection approach will not leave the system unprotected so if your system is in the into many layers failure of one layer will not have significant effect on the uh, overall performance of the system by using multiple uh, layers uh, for example overlapping approaches the failure uh, chances uh, decrease very significantly and that will not leave the system unprotected uh, in general this term is referred as defense in the depth 
So final fundamental security design principle is least astonishment. It means that the program or the user interface should always respond in a way that it is least likely to astonish the user. The mechanism for authorization should be transparent enough to, to a user and the user has a good intuitive understanding of how the security goes back to the provided security mechanism. So moving to the next topic, uh, attack services and attack trees. These are two useful con concepts that are helpful in evaluating the classifying uh, threats. So these two concepts will help you to analyze the uh, number of security attacks that can uh, be uh, used to target your system. So first of all, we define an attack surface. An attack surface is consists of reachable and exploitable vulnerabilities in a system. Uh, it means that any possible attacks that can happen on your system is referred as attack surface. For example, uh, open ports can be an example, outward facing web uh, and the other servers, the servers uh, the code listening on these ports can be one of the uh, ways to attack your on your system. Services available on the inside of a firewall, uh, this can also be very helpful to uh, initiate the attack. Code that processes the incoming data uh, input validation, emails, uh, data transfer through XML files, office documents, and industry specific uh, custom data exchange objects such as JSON uh, format can also be used to uh, create the attacks. Uh, interfaces also help you to create the attacks. Uh, it can also be done using the SQL injection and input provided through the web forms. Uh, an employee with the access to the sensitive information is also vulnerable to a social engineering attack. Social engineering attacks that mean he can uh, provide the information to unwanted person uh, so that they can access to a system. So um, attack services are categorized in three uh, subdomains. Uh, first of all, network attack surface. That means attacks on the networks refer to the vulnerabilities over an enterprise network, wide area network, or the internet. So, uh, all the network attacks are included in this category, such as uh, network protocol vulnerabilities, such as uh, denial of service attacks, uh, or uh, disruption of communication, and various kind of intruder attacks. Software attack services refer to the uh, softwares or the application vulnerabilities such as utility programs or operating system code running on your server. Uh, a particular focus is the web servers, uh, web server software in this kind of attack. And another kind of attack which does not actually have implement uh, specific relation to the system are called human attack service surface uh, refers to the vulnerabilities created by personal or outsider it can be done using the social engineering uh, or human error and a trusted insider then can provide information to an external user so uh, this slide shows a uh, simple overview of a defense in a attack surface so before moving forward uh, to attack trees, uh, we must provide, uh, we must use an uh, attack service analysis. It will be very helpful uh, technique for assessing the scale and the security of our uh, uh, system and the severity of the threats to our system. A systematic analysis of points of uh, vulnerability make developer and security analysis analysts aware of uh, where the security mechanism are required. So once uh, you define the attack surface, uh, you are able to find ways how to overcome such problems and you want to decrease that attack surface to a lower level. That means you, when you know this attack surface, you can uh, in, uh, exploit the 
techniques to make it very uh, simple as possible so however it is very difficult to uh, control that exercise unless you have the proper understanding of your system and the number of attacks that can be initiated by the user the attack service also provide guidance uh, for setting priorities for testing strengthening and uh, specifying security measures and modifying the service of application similarly uh, you can uh, increase the number of layers to mitigate the uh, severity of your attack so if your system have uh, a number of layers and you cater the number of attacks using the attack services your system should be in the low security risk however uh, if you do not cater the uh, attack services detailed uh, and you do not apply the layering there is a high chance of attack on your system and it can uh, disrupt your data very badly Attack trees uh, are a branching hierarchical data structures that represent a set of potential techniques for exploiting a security uh, vulnerability. The security incident that the goal of attack is represented as a root node. That means what you want to achieve uh, by initiating the attack. So it is represented as a root node of the tree and the ways that an attacker could reach that cause are represented as branches and the sub nodes of the tree the final nodes on the path uh, from the node are called the leaf nodes and these represent uh, different ways to initiate an attack the motivation of use of uh, tree attacks uh, attack trees is to effectively exploit the information available on the attack pattern so here is a example of a simple attack tree this example shows an attack tree analysis of internet banking authentication uh, bank account compromise so it is represented as a root node of the tree so it is the actually objective of the uh, attacker so he wants he or she wants to compromise the user account the shaded boxes uh, on the tree are the leaf node in which uh, represent the event that actually compromise the attack for example user surveillance uh, theft of tokens etc marked as uh, shaded areas are used to uh, uh, actually uh, initiate the attack using some kind of mechanism uh, all the tree nodes uh, sorry all the nodes and the other leaf nodes are or nodes that means you can use uh, any of the a mechanism to compromise the bank account uh, of any user if you observe uh, some of these root nodes are marked with keywords such as ut u1 ut u1 and some are marked as uh, cc2 and uh, another one is marked as ib as one well. These actually specify uh, from where the user uh, can or an attacker can initiate the attack. U T or U means uh, user terminal and user. These attacks uh, usually target the user equipment. For example, it can be uh, invoked using the tokens that you use for the login, or it can use the, your smart card or your mobile phone and other password generators such as the uh, actually brute force attacks can be used uh, to generate passwords for your account and the actions of the user the other kind uh, cc means uh, it involves the communication challenge uh, this type of attack focuses on the communication links uh, it can be done by sniffing or uh, actually reading the packets of uh, transmission and IBS uh, stands for Internet Banking Server Attack. These types of attacks are offline attacks uh, against the servers of the hosting applications such as Internet Banking applications. So if you look at the uh, overall uh, 
description of the attack bank account compromised is divided into further five subcategories number one is the user credential compromised so that you can use the user credential to compromise the account it can also be done with the injection of commands user credential guessing and security policy violation and use of known uh, uh, authentication session by a that attacker so each type is further divided into uh, further uh, subtypes so for example a user credential compromise can be done uh, to uh, log in into a your bank account uh, system it can be done using variety of ways such as user surveillance uh, theft of free token etc so these are listed as uh, shaded areas that can actually specify an implementable technique so this strategy can be used against many uh, elements of the attack surface and there are procedural attacks such as monitoring the user actions to observe a pin so someone can uh, initiate an attack to uh, find out your pin core uh, so pin of your uh, banking account uh, or other credential or theft of the user token uh, or handwriting notes for example some can someone can actually uh, read to the notes where you have written the password so it also includes uh, uh, the compromise of token information using variety of token attack tools such as hacking the smart card or using the brute force approach or they can guess the uh, pin number or password of your account Another possible strategy is to embed the malicious software that means they direct you to some another site where they can capture the username and password of your uh, user account and compromise the user login and password. They can also attempt to obtain the credential information via communication channels uh, using sniffing and uh, finally they can use various means to engage the communication with the target users such as uh, so they can uh, initiate a social engineering they can call you and Im impersonate themselves by they are talking from some organization you must have seen such kind of examples uh, when many people uh, received calls uh, from unknown numbers that uh, they are speaking from uh, general headquarters of uh, army and they want to uh, actually validate your account so you, the, you, they ask user to provide information and they use other mechanisms such as uh, website manipulations where they, they target you to force uh, to enter your app, uh, user account into a fake site another kind of uh, attack is uh, uh, this can be user bank compromise can be achieved by another form of attack uh, called injection of command active man in the middle attack so in this kind of attack the attacker is able to intercept the communication however it, it is very difficult uh, kind of attack uh, but if uh, the communication channel is uh, compromised and the attacker can listen the communication between user task and internet banking service application and various can, schemes can be used to uh, that are able to impersonate the valid user to gain access to the banking system another way is to use the uh, user credential guessing that uh, you employ a brute force attack on the system to guess the uh, authentication information and brute force attacks uh, against some banking application schemes are feasible by sending uh, random usernames and password the attack mechanism is based on distributed zombie personal computers hosting automated program for username and password based evaluation uh, another kind of security uh, attack is the security policy violation for example violating the bank's security policy in combination with the uh, weak access control and logging mechanism an employee may cause the internal security incident or expose the customer account for example the calls we receive from the uh, unknown numbers they know our uh, names uh, ID card numbers and uh, in which uh, banks we have the account so these are the security policy violations that internal 
members of the bank uh, disclose our information to unknown uh, attackers so they can gain the uh, benefits uh, by hacking into our uh, uh, bank accounts another kind of attack is the uh, use of known authenticated session by attackers this is actually very difficult uh, to achieve this type of attack persuades or forces the user to connect to internet banking system with preset session id once the user authenticates to the server the attacker may utilize the known session id to send the packets to the internet banking server and so that they can spoof the identity of the user so here is a simple example of attack three uh, you uh, actually identify the root cause uh, or the root target uh, of an attacker that was to uh, bank uh, to compromise the bank account and they were uh, you identified number of uh, types that can help the attacker to achieve the compromise and then you divided the each uh, subtype into an actual actionable attack that can attacker be used to compromise the bank account security so if you are able to mitigate each kind of root node uh, sorry leaf node you are able to uh, better your uh, attack uh, surface and the lower the attack surface is the more the chances of uh, better security this diagram represents a typical model of network security in general terms so it is described as a message is being transferred from the one party called sender across some internet service to another party called recipients the two parties are called the principals that are involved in the transaction for example sender and the receiver these parties use a communication channel that uh, leads the information from a source to a destination and it can be uh, done by using the number of communication protocols such as TCP IP by the two principles. Security aspects come into the play when uh, it is necessary or desirable to protect the information transmission from an opponent. Uh, who may present a threat or to confidentiality, authenticity, integrity, etc. So all the techniques providing security have two components. First component is a security related information. So that deals with uh, this part of uh, model. Security related information is the information to be sent on the communication channel. For example, it includes an encryption of the message which scrambles the message so that it is unreadable by the opponent or in addition of some code based or content to the message so that uh, user can, uh, sorry, the actual recipient can modify uh, that using some encryption key and uh, know that the message is authenticated and sent by a authorized Center. The second part is the, some secret information that must be shared by the two principals involved in the communication. It, it can be done using a third party. A third party is responsible to share some kind of information between two parties to, so that the in communication takes place in a secret manner. A secret information shared by true principals and it is hoped uh, unknown to the opponent an example is an encryption key in conjunction with the transformation that helps you to read the message at the reception so the general model uh, shows that there are four basic tasks in designing a particular security design service the first part is the design of an algorithm for performing security related transformation the algorithm should be such that the opponent cannot defeat its purpose so it has some uh, better quality so that the opponent is not able to guess the information 
the next task is to generate the secret information using the that algorithm the third step should be develop methods for the distribution uh, and sharing of secret information so the third method usually deals with the communication channel and the final method uh, final part should be uh, to specify a protocol that is used by the two principal to make sure the security algorithm and the secret information to achieve with a particular security service and it can be done using a third party application then previous model can help you to uh, specify a number of security systems however there are some conditions other situations uh, which uh, do not reflect the particular mechanism that is represented in the previous slide so this uh, figure actually reflects a concern for protecting information system from unwanted access so most of the you must be familiar with the concerns caused by the existence of hackers who attempt to penetrate the system uh, using some kind of technique uh, uh, the system the hacker can be someone uh, with the um, uh, you know some ambition to simply gain access to the system without actually damage the system or it can be someone uh, who uh, wants to damage the data or uh, it can be someone who wants to uh, use the computer assets for financial gains such as obtaining credit card numbers or to want to perform some uh, illegal transfers so uh, it can be uh, mitigated using some kind of goalkeeper uh, sorry gatekeeper uh, that help you to uh, secure your computing resources data processes software and internal security uh, control so this unwanted access can be mitigated by the placement of a computer system of logical uh, logic that exploits the vulnerabilities in the system that can affect the application program as well as the utility program such as editors and compilers program can also present two kind of threats uh, number one is information access threat and the service threat information access threat means that intercept of uh, or modification of data on behalf of user who should not have the access to the uh, data and service threat means exploit of service flaws in the computer to inhibit use of legitimate user so uh, the two common examples are viruses and worms that can be used in Uh, unwanted access using the program uh, such attacks can be introduced in the system uh, by means of a disk uh, or a usb that contains the unwanted logical software uh, that is uh, useful in the nature but it contains uh, some viruses or worms that means a, pro uh, a legal uh, program contains some illegal uh, executable files they can also be inserted to a system uh, using a network uh, 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 the security mechanism needed to cope uh, with this unwanted access fault into broad categories the first category we dealt is termed as a gatekeeper function in which we discussed in the previous manner it includes the password based login login procedures that are designed to deny access and uh, to all the user Uh, but only authorized users are accessed after some screening logic uh, that is designed to detect and reject the worms and viruses uh, once either an unwanted user or unwanted software gains access and the second line of defense consists of a variety of internal protocols such as some anti viruses that monitor the activity and analyze the stored information in a, an attempt to detect uh, the presence of unwanted intruders finally uh, you can employ some standards to uh, actually enhance the security of your system uh, standards have been developed to uh, 
manage the overall architecture and security mechanism uh, and services of your application so various organizations uh, have been involved in the development and promotion of these standards some are listed here are national institute of standard and uh, and technology nist is a us federal agency that deals with the measurement of science standard and technology created by us government etc uh, despite the international scope nist federal information processing standard and the special publications have worldwide impact another standard is uh, internet society isoc uh, it provides the leadership in addressing issues that confront the future of the internet and in, in the organization or home uh, for the groups responsible for the internet infrastructure standard itu is uh, international telecommunication reunion uh, stand telecommunication standardization sector is one of the three sectors in the itu and whose mission is to develop the technical standards for the field of telecommunication and finally uh, and the iso is an international standardization uh, organization is a worldwide federation national standard bodies for more than 140 countries so it can also be used to uh, better the security of your system so that concludes our uh, lecture uh, we discussed some fundamental security design principles that helps us to uh, actually uh, implement a security service in a better way that is helpful for the user and the developer. Then we uh, investigated a network security model in which uh, uh, we studied that we can use uh, a four-step mechanism uh, for transferring information between sender uh, and the receiver uh, and the, finally we discussed some network uh, security standards that can help us to uh, actually achieve a better security of our system if you want to study more you can read the chapter one of the recommended book Thank you very much if you have any question you can ask in the question and answer session